Hi, everybody. This is Mr. Biscaywitz, a.k.a. Mr. B. I am the middle school engineering teacher at Hayfield Secondary School. This video is part of our mousetrap car project. And it specifically is going to talk about how we use white box learning. That is a tool that we use at Hayfield a lot. How do we use box, white box learning to design a car that is successful in the competition model that white box learning has. And so I'm going to be jumping down some slides real quick. Uh, this does uh, assume a couple of things I'll talk about in a minute. So I got a good jumping down through these slides. Just bear with me, please. Just one second. Okay. First of all, uh, one of the things this, this video assumes is that you've already watched this really awesome video by a Mr. Mark Rober, uh, very popular with the kids and become very popular with me too. Uh, this is the name of the video, it's a YouTube video. And he really goes through every aspect of, of mousetrap cars, building ones that go for really long distances. Great, uh, he's really great at explaining pretty complex things, uh, especially in the world of physics. So thank you, Mr. Rober. The four main takeaways from his video is about how the force is delivered from the mouse trap to the car to the rear axle and he talks about wanting to deliver that force from the mouse trap to the rear wheels over a small amount of force spread out over a long period of time now that means it's a small fraction for mechanical advantage um, so we want we're talking long lever arms here really slow moving car but it goes a really long time the other thing he talks about, too, is reducing friction, wheels, axles, bushings, things like that. Um, those are the main things that are going to affect our model in white box learning and the kit that we're using. We also purchased from white box learning. We are uh, reducing the weight and reducing rotational inertia get, uh, is not really a big part of what we do. We're using the wheels that came with the kit. Um, we are uh, reducing the weight. The kit it's just in, it is, there's not a whole lot of weight that can be reduced. You'll, you'll see what I mean um, as we get into it. Um, so these things are lesser important. They're more like fine tuning things, but this is really to get the kids going. White box learning has a competition model, a competition model where the kids build a first car in competition level one and advance to level two, three, four, et cetera. This is to get them going in level one. Once they get going, they pretty much uh, know how to finish up level one and go on to level two. So I'm just talking about level one right now. All right, so let, let's skip ahead on that. Um, so here we go, next slide. So this does assume that you have a white box learning account and you know the basics like logging in and things like that. Uh, I am gonna bring white box up. I'm gonna do the things that I'm telling students to do. Uh, to get to certain places in the video, like this screen right here. So what I'm telling is, okay, log into Whitebox, uh, create a new design, enable all of these views up here in the design section. And the only view I want them to enable down in the analysis section is this one that says performance. And I'm going to do that right now. So let me get into Whitebox. There we go. So I'm logged in, I'm going into engineering. And if you remember what I said, I said, well, you're gonna create a new model and you gotta give it a name, Mr. B4, how about that? Um, and I'm gonna enable all of these views so I can see uh, the whole car and I'm gonna enable this performance window, okay? And this tells me, you know, what my car uh, is doing right now and it's not too bad. Let's go over this uh, performance window real quick. It's telling me that my mouse trap is putting power to the back wheels for a little over three seconds. And then we're coasting. Like when you're riding your bike um, and you stop pedaling, your bike doesn't come to a dead stop. It keeps coasting. And it's showing the distance. So as soon as the mouse trap goes, we start getting some distance. And then it talks about the velocity to starts off slow, peaks up about two and a half seconds, and then slows down to a stop. Okay. Now, all well and good, right? Looks really, looks great. However, 
Um, let's go on to the next slide, all right? So the next slide says, uh, you got to get your design inspect. And my students know all about this too well. Um, and that is anything that is red, you go to the output section, design spec, anything that's in the red, you got to fix uh, because you can't put an out of spec car into competition. Well, you can, but you don't get any points for it. Doesn't, doesn't do you much good. So um, what I'm just telling students right here is that, um, yeah, there's a lot of red ink on here, but the only two that really matter are these two right here. Don't worry about this first one where it says, did the car cross the finish line? And it says, no, that's gonna resolve itself as we resolve th these things down here. Trust me on that, okay? So um, the two main things is our wheel, rear wheel diameter has to be between 35 and 55 millimeters. Well, it's 58, it's too big. We need a smaller wheel at this level, level one. Uh, rear axle is saying our rear axle position is at 25 millimeters from the rear, and it's supposed to be between nine and 20. Pretty easy to fix, okay? So let me jump back over here to white box, and uh, you can see I've got the, the same spec as was on my design. I'm gonna go fix this rear wheel and rear axle, okay? And I just gotta use a smaller wheel and a smaller axle. And I believe I even told the students um, what to use. Set the wheel to rear racer, set the position to some number between nine and 20, because that's what our spec says we can do, okay? So trying to make it easy, trying to get kids going on this, uh, it can seem a little, little daunting at first. Okay, so I'm just working on the rear wheel assembly right here, rear wheel assembly. And I'm going to change those wheels. Now, notice there's a bunch of choices, but I want you to notice that this 3.0, uh, these are actually 3D printed wheels. That's a three inch wheel. It's even bigger than what you see on the car right now. What's on the car right now is Tamiya Nero, I guess. Um, I probably didn't pronounce that right, but anyway. Um, and then you have five and a half inch uh, wheels. Those are, uh, those are really big. And CDs, as you know, or DVDs, same as a DVD, they're even bigger. So that only really leaves us one. Now we're on the rear wheel, so we're going to use the rear racers, okay? And uh, the other thing it said that we needed to do was we needed to change the position from rear to be 9 to 20, because that's what the spec says, and it's currently 25. So we're going to come over here. And I'm just going to pick kind of a middle of the road number is what I usually do is 15 is kind of in the middle. And uh, let's apply that. All right. Don't worry about what just happened to your performance. Your performance just went. OK, but. <laughs> after we did that, well, we're in spec. OK, so look. Yay, we're in spec but the car doesn't move. And see if I go look at my spec in here. Yeah, the car doesn't move. We still have this problem up here. I said, don't worry about that. That's gonna resolve itself, okay? So do not worry about that. Okay, now, so let's, okay, we're in spec, congratulations, but you know, the car doesn't move. That's not too great. So now we're gonna go back to what Mark was talking about. He was talking about that, uh, how quickly our lever arm is moving. So if you look here on this performance chart, and I'm going to go to my full screen in a minute, but you can see it says it, that mousetrap is, goes from nothing to it's done in just a little over a second. That's like schwack. Okay. So that is not exactly a long and slow movement. So that's really the issue we're talking about here, we want to change that. And if we make our lever arm longer, that's gonna slow down that lever arm and give us a little bit of force that's gonna last over a longer time, okay? So we're gonna do that. And so let's just jump right in it and do it. Now, um, we're going back to engineering. 
And the lever arm, anything to do with the mouse trap and the force, it all comes from the mouse trap assembly. And so the length, the length is only like one hundred. Now, how long can we make it? Well, we always go to the spec. It says right here, the lever arm can be between sixty and two hundred and sixty-five. And we're only at 100, so we're definitely at the short end of this. So we're going to go ahead and increase that lever arm uh, quite a bit. We can go between 60 and 265. So let's do that. Oops, sorry. Engineering. And let's make it, I don't know, let's say, I, don't, some, I like to go down the middle, right? So, well, this isn't exactly the middle, but it's an improvement. Okay, it, it definitely improved. Um, instead of just a little over a second, our lever arm is going out here at 2.1 seconds. Little bit better, okay? Let's, let's stick with that for right now. So, what, we're, um, what else did we say we need to take a look at? Friction, remember? That was the second thing Mark talked about. Friction is your enemy. Friction is like putting the brakes on. So we are going to reduce the friction. The main sources of friction that we have is see where these axles go through that chassis. Um, that axle is rubbing right on the wood with nothing, nothing to help it. Like, you know, there's no grease there. There's no oil there. There's no nothing there. Um, that's creating a heck of a lot of friction and making it very hard for our wheels to spin. So let's take a look at what we can do about that. So here's what I'm talking about right here. Um, let me go ahead and zoom in a little bit. Right here, see where that hole is? See where that axle goes through the wood? It's metal on wood, not good, okay? <laughs> it's gonna create an awful lot of friction. Those wheels are gonna really have a hard time turning. So what I said to do in here is you're gonna go change the axles to brass. They're steel right now, which is the worst. So I'm going to change it to brass. And then I'm going to add some bearings. Now, now what is a bearing? What a bearing is, it's something you put between usually two things that are moving or one that is sitting still, one that is moving, that creates a smoother, lower friction surface between the two. Okay? So <clears throat> we are going to put something that's going to, these bearings are going to go between the axle and the wood. So right in here, instead of that axle rubbing directly on the wood, we're going to put a bearing. We're going to put something in between there. Uh, you might have heard of ball bearings, bushings, things like that. So this, we're just calling this a bearing, okay? And so first thing it said was change the axle to brass. So I'm going to do that, okay? And then it says, add, uh, ch change the bearings to plastic straw. Okay, right now it says there's no bearing at all. So I'm going to change it to a plastic straw. And I'm going to apply that. Okay, didn't make much difference yet. Don't worry. Remember I said you have to do the front and rear assembly. Okay, so that's just the rear assembly. And now I'm going to go do the front assembly. I'm going to do exactly the same thing. Get rid of steel. Steel is the worst. I, I don't know what situation you want to use steel in. Well, there's one that's kind of obscure. We'll talk about that later. And so I uh, changed it to brass and plastic straw, just like my instruction said. And I'm going to apply that so front and rear are taken care of. And oh, our car is moving. Interesting. So check this out. The mousetrap is still going pretty fast, right? We made our mousetrap, our, our lever arm, I'm sorry, lever arm. We made our lever arm longer, but it's still putting all the power to the wheels in just two seconds. We want something more like five seconds at least, okay? But the good news is our car is moving. It's not moving real far. OK, but we are moving and we're even getting into the coasting section, which means 
okay, yeah, we're running out of power and then we're close, but we are moving. This is progress, all right? There's one other item that, <coughs> excuse me, Mark doesn't talk about explicitly because um, the, the kind of wheels he was using, this really wasn't a factor, but it is on this kit, on the white box kit, all right? Um, and that is, we're putting so much power down to these rear wheels so quick, they're spinning. Have you ever seen a wheel do something like this? And now this wheel is actually on ice, okay? And so you put that power down and you're on a slick surface. There is what we call traction. There is no traction there at all. It just spins. The car doesn't go anywhere. Well, we can actually increase the traction of our rear wheels by putting rubber bands on the rear wheel. Rubber bands? I didn't see any rubber bands. Well, they're there. Let's go back to the rear wheel section rubber bands. Let's use them. Now, I'm going to caution all of you watching this video. Don't go crazy yet and say, oh, I'm going to try doing this and that. And that. Just do exactly what I'm telling you to do. You'll have a chance to experiment with all sorts of different things. Like maybe you want to try a different axle or, or whatever. Okay. But just, just do the settings that I'm telling you to do so we can get moving along here. Wow, now that is a big difference. Check this, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take the rubber band off. Look, we were going, our total distance was less than half a meter, but by adding rubber bands, so our tires aren't just spinning, okay? We are going almost 10 meters. That's a pretty big improvement. And you can see when the mouse trap starts, as soon as it lets go, we start moving pretty quick, but we are still sitting there spinning wheels for half a second. Huh. I wonder what we can do about that. But that's where this video stops, because I want you to think about that. How can we spread that force out, make it a little bit softer, and so we don't waste any of that mousetrap force at all because the first half second of it we're wasting it it's or 0.4 seconds technically right we are wasting it our wheels are spinning how can we do something about that we've got uh we've reduced the friction on the front and rear axles by changing the brass and plastic straw we added these rubber bands to the back you never want to add rubber bands to the front. So I'll tell you right now, that is not going to help you. That's actually going to make things a little bit worse. But how can we kind of maybe slow down that power a little bit so we're getting all of the power of the mouse trap through the car? That's where we're going to stop. But right now, if we go and look at our outputs, I told you that car did not cross finish line would be resolved. And it was resolved because of the things we did. The things we did were we slowed down our lever arm by making it longer. We reduced the friction on the axles by switching out the axle to a better metal. Uh, brass is a much softer, smoother metal. It's also much lighter than, than, uh, than steel axles. And adding that plastic straw. Uh, which I usually demonstrate in class by simply uh, spinning the axle, in, you know, in bare wood versus a plastic straw. Um, so we, you know, changed our axles. We added that plastic straw. We did it on the front and the back. And we added those rubber bands to keep our, to add some traction to keep our wheels just from spinning. And lo and behold, we got a car that is doing okay. We could go ahead and put this car in the competition and get some points. But I'm telling you, there's still some meat on the bone here, right? There's still 0.4 seconds of wasted energy. You guys got to go figure that out. Hey, good luck.